Hello all, Stimation look like some more Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. In the last episode, we explored the arena, and we took care of the free trial rooms, and we got all the items that were inside of them. This episode, is time to face against the boss of the arena. And, remember back in the clock tower I said you should grind for Medusa's head soul? This boss fight is the reason why. Now, it doesn't come until the second phase, but trust me, if you do not have the Medusa's head soul, this boss fight will suck ass. Okay. That's a lot of bats. That's a big bat. And that, my friend, is a fist that just squished the big bat. Meet Belor. Belor is this sort of huge head with hands boss, kind of like um, Wham Bam Rock from the Kirby series. Kind of weird that I'm comparing this Castlevania game to a Kirby game. But the first phase isn't too difficult. He has these two hands that he's constantly swinging at you, trying to punch you, and sort of smash down on you. And you're just trying to hit the eye that's open while dodging them. So the first phase isn't too bad. The second phase is where things start to get interesting. The first eye closes, and then the second one will open. Now you're gonna, you're gonna want to use the Medusa Soul and constantly whack the open eye. If not, he'll be sort of spreading out these fires on the ground, and trying to jump over those while hitting the eye is a really big issue. Or a really big pain. I can speak English, yay. So overall, as you saw there, the boss fight isn't too bad as long as you have the Meteor Set Soul. If not, the second phase of that boss fight is really difficult, and we don't want to deal with that. So with that out of the way, I'm going to put Manticore on actually, because I really like the soul, and I want to use it more. Obviously the main purpose of it was just to get through um, the waterfall in the place, but... I will use it more to murder my enemies. Oh. Jay, what's wrong? You look pale. D don't worry, just now. All of my memories came flooding back. What? It seems your dark powers triggered the return of my memories. Just like I guessed. I have quite an extensive history with Dracula. I thought so. My real name is Julius Belmont. I am a descendant of a clan that's fought Dracula for ages. And the person who destroyed Dracula in 1999 was... Yes, it was me. There were others who assisted me. So if Dracula's revived again, just as written in the prophecy... I must destroy him. It's my destiny. You haven't met a man named Graham yet, have you? Graham? Oh, you mean that missionary, right? I met him a little while ago, but when he saw my face, he turned and ran. He told me that he was Dracula. I did sense Dracula's powers at work within him, but it's difficult to believe that he's Dracula. Rather, I think... No, forget it. It's nothing more than a hunch. Huh? Assuming he's Dracula, I won't be able to kill him yet. Why not? I need my weapon. Your weapon? Yes, it's a whip that was handed down to me. It's called Vampire Killer. In 1999, I sealed its path, or I sealed it in this castle to weaken its spirit and magical powers. That means it's in this castle somewhere. Yes, and I know exactly where it is. I'll go and get it now. All right, please be careful. Pray that my hunch proved me wrong. Farewell for now. So a little reunion with Jay or Julius, as he now remembered his name was there. And we can move on. You also saw in that little vase I smashed, we got the giant bat soul out of that. The giant bat soul is very interesting. If I equip this here, it will turn us into a bat, and that lets us fly around freely. It also lowers your strength and you quite a bit, so you can fit into those narrow passageways we saw earlier. I don't know how many of them actually have useful items in them, but this is obviously a very useful soul, because using this, we can now go as high as we please. Which opens up a lot of new areas, for, or a lot of areas for us to explore. And our double jump can't quite make it up there, so time to fly. And we're apparently back to Skull Mignons, because apparently they thought putting Lubicans here would be too broken. Now this room is very interesting. We have a Succubus there, which was the Ballot Slot of the Lilith, and speaking of Lilith, there's one right here. I really don't know what's up with this room, it's very strange. As you can see up there, we have one of those controller platforms, or statues rather, that's leaking out into a waterfall to fill up this pond. And I don't know if you see it there, guys, but, uh, there is a rubber duck in this little pond here. So we have a little bath with a rubber duck, a succubus, and a lubricant. What is going on here? And obviously I meant Lilith, not lubricant. Herp derp, I can totally remember Castlevania enemy names. And I'm poisoned, great. Okay, I already have your soul, so I'm not gonna bother fighting you again. I think I have your soul as well now, so I don't need to fight you. I can just ignore all you guys. Here we have Bale, which is a Palosaur of Boyer, who we saw earlier. 
They really like their palace slots in this area, don't they? I don't believe all this was for an item. Go away, where Jaguar, I don't like you. And Killer Mantle, Soul, please. No, okay. And now we have the giant skeleton, which is a power swap of the Creaking Skull. Yes, there are even power swapping bosses now. When will the madness stop? And much like the Creaking Skull, if you kill him, you'll get quite a bit of experience, and his soul is going to be a pain to grind for, but we'll worry about that a lot later. So this was a detour for a thousand dollars, which, meh, I guess that's alright. Okay, and I need to kill you just in case you drop your soul. It's unlikely that you will, but just in case. Alrighty. Failed at jumping over a laser skeleton there, that was smart of me. And Succubus, do you want to give me your soul? I mean, technically I'm meant to fight these things later on when they're a lot more common, but if I can get one soul now, that'd be nice. She certainly does have a lot of health, and the Lilith is just getting in the way there. Okay, I'll grind for that later. Because grinding on camera is not entertaining at all. Okay. I have a feeling getting that soul is going to be absolutely... Yeah. When an enemy has that much health, grinding for its soul can never be fun. Right now, I just want to get out of here. Okay. So with our new ability to turn to a bat, we can obviously enter a lot more areas. And the first place I want to go to is the Castle Corridor. We came here a lot earlier, well obviously we've been here a lot earlier, we keep coming back to this place, but we came here earlier and we saw a weapon we couldn't quite get up to. Now we can, and that is Vijaya. And I just accidentally used a high mind up there. Right by the lightning of Indra. Now well, let's go ahead and put this on. So, uh, it's not terribly useful, but hey, we can get up to it now anyway, so might as well grab that for collection's sake, I guess. Oh, it pierces. I am not familiar with this weapon, that's interesting. So hold on, does the sword part pierce or the lightning part? Let me test with one of you guys. Lightning doesn't pierce, but if you hit it with the lightning and the sword, then it pierces. Okay, that's pretty interesting, but I'm still going to be sticking to claim, so A. Alrighty. I also need to pay hammer visit since I'm all out of potions and I'm pretty sure I need to buy some other stuff. And apparently he's interested about Yoko being wounded. Uh huh. So apparently I'm keeping absolutely no potions. Wonderful. Okay, let's buy some of those. He's now selling high potions, which is, um. interesting. Anything else useful? Seems he's maxed out weapons he's selling, but he's now selling this. Soul Leader Ring increases the appearance rate of spirits, or souls, basically. If you equip this ring, then you'll have a much greater chance of collecting an enemy soul. And obviously, since I'm going for every er, going for 100% souls, this is an item I'm going to need. Or, well, not really need, but it's going to make my life a lot easier. Especially with things like grinding. I wish I had that during Manticore grinding, but whatever. As you can see there, it costs 300,000 gold, and I have 15,000. Yeah, this is going to take quite a lot of grinding for, but I have a plan to get that much money. So I'll meet you when I'm at that area. Welcome back to the Clock Tower. You remember this place, don't you? And you remember, I mentioned this sort of two candles signifying a save point here, next to a bed of spikes. Here's my plan of making money. So remember I grinded for that Mimic Soul, increases money as damage has occurred. As long as you are taking damage, your money will be going up by how much damage you take. And just to make this even more painful, I'm going to be taking off absolutely everything here. And actually I can keep that on even though it's not really going to help me that much, because yes, the claim slate does raise up your defense. Although, not, ma not that much, and if somebody said stop me getting out, then I really want this to be on. But anyway, since we have the Mimic Soul on, if we break these platforms here, we can keep getting hit by the spikes here. As you can see there, I have 16,000 gold. After I let myself get damaged by the spikes a few times, that's gone up to 17,000. And 18,000. 
So we'll need 10,000. And 19,000. So needless to say, if you want to sit here for a while and grind for money, you can. And this is how, well this is my preferred way of getting the money necessary to buy the Soul Eater Ring every time I play. So I'm going to grind here. Yes, I'm going to literally sit here and grind until I have 300,000 gold. See you in what is a second for you and an eternity for me. Goodbye. And there we go, 315,000 gold. So, 315,000. Yeah, I think I said that number right. Anyway, now we have 300,000, we can go back to Hammer and purchase the um, Soul Eater Ring. And I also got an extra 15,000 to spend on just other things like high potions I may need. So let's go ahead and put school on so we can actually go down here. And I fell way faster than I thought I would. Okay, apparently they don't drop steak or salt, they drop tasty meat. Um, out of a thing that looks like an underground or an underwater porcupine, I don't really see how that thing could drop meat, but whatever. Let's now make our way back to the shop, I suppose. And hey, Gremlin, would you like to give me your soul? Because that 16 increase to luck is very nice. Please. This is a very good spot to grind for a gremlin soul, it seems. Do I want to get it now, or do I want to come back with the Soul Eater Ring? Uh, some girls might want to come back with Soul Eater Ring. Goodbye. Pretty sure the Warp Room is just back here. So let's jump get down. Reduce heads in the way. And right in here. Okay, my life's about to get so much easier. <laughs> Even though grinding for all that money is a little bit of a pain, it's all worth it for the Soul Looter Ring in the end, because this thing makes souls so much easier to get. And while I'm at it, I might as well put back on the um, Aurox's suit, just get my attack and defense back up. Okay, Hammer. You're gonna think I robbed a bank, but here you are. Exactly, 300,000, there we go. Soul Eater Ring is mine, and while I'm at it, might as well buy some high potions. I have the money for it, so there we go. So, Rare Ring, we've only had you for about an episode now, but I'm already replacing you for something. Because this thing is worth it. Okay, so now we have the Soul Eater Ring. Next time on Castlevania Ari of Sorrow, we'll be going back through the castle corridor and making our way to the final area of the game. See you guys then.